G'day legends, g'day superstars, Peps here for this week's round seven, losers for a massive round of footy. Actually had a bad week last week, only picking three losers, but it's all going to be changing this weekend. I guarantee I will pick you the worst of the worst, and that's what we do at Lace Out because it's how we want our footy. And it's all kicking off. Last night, which was Melbourne versus Richmond, I would have picked my boys at D's to take this one out. They were very, very, very average game of football. Let's be honest. If you didn't want to turn the TV off at halftime, I wouldn't have said that would have been a bad decision. It was an absolute shocker. They came out after halftime. They got the win. We expected Richmond to lose, but all in all, it wasn't the greatest game of football. But the real Anzac Day game kicks off today. And we are talking about 3.20 p.m., Essendon versus Collingwood. It is the 30th, I will say that again, the 30th Anzac Day game. And this is getting bigger and bigger every single season. And for the first time in a long time, I think this is actually going to be a very tight game. Collingwood bounced back beautifully after uh, a slow start against Port Adelaide last week. And Essendon, well, what could we say about the Bombers? They have been nothing short of fantastic over the last couple of weeks. So it's almost, who do I trust more at the moment? Essendon were really good defensively last week, um, but I also saw Collingwood start to get a bit more of their run and gun come back. I think this is going to be a really tight game across the board. I just think which team at their best wins, and that would be Collingwood. But don't be surprised if Essendon come out the losers but by less than two goals in this one. It is going to be a cracker dacker of the game at the G. And uh, lest we forget for everybody who's served in our armed forces, Anzac Day, thank you for your service. You have been absolutely sensational. All right, it kicks off later again tonight, 7.35 p.m. at Monica Roval, GWS versus the Brisbane Lions. Another belter of a game. GWS had a bit of a hiccup last week against Carlton. They should have won that one, but bad kicking is bad football. And we know about the Brisbane Lions. They are woeful right now and brisbane lions are going to lose again and their chances of not just making finals or not even playing home finals will go completely out the window gws have been magnificent green unfortunately won't be playing due to being suspended for let's just be honest it was a brace it was as i would say a football act but uh i think brisbane lions they're going to find it hard against monica Roval. gws love playing at that particular ground it's 7 35 p.m they are going to have a, a cracker dilla and Brisbane Lions will go down by probably three or four goals with this one. All right, let's head over to Friday night. 7.40 p.m. at the Adelaide Oval, Port Adelaide versus St. Kilda. You could almost say two disappointing teams for various reasons. Port Adelaide had five goals up against Collingwood last week and fell in a complete hole. And St. Kilda have been up and down like a bride's nighty. But let's just say that they are due for another loss, I think, this weekend. I just can't see them beating Port at home, they are a completely different beast. I think they're a massive chance. They've got the Twin Towers. I've talked about it last week with Alir Alir. And they've also got Sava Radagalir. That'll block out anything for Max King and Memory down there. Their midfield is sublime. Um, and their forwards are just getting the job done. St Kilda, I just don't really trust them at the moment. They're almost in the friend zone. I don't know. They're not that crap, but they're not that good anywhere. They don't actually mean anything, to be honest. And I think they're going to lose this one probably by about five goals as well, too. All right, let's get into Super Saturday. But this first game, which is 145... At uh, Blunderstone Arena, North Melbourne Football Club versus the Adelaide Crows. This is not going to be an absolute cracking start to the weekend. This is going to be an absolute Barry Crocker at its finest. If Adelaide don't win this one by at least seven goals, there's something wrong. North Melbourne, they just can't defend. Uh, over the last five weeks, every single team has kicked 100 points against them, and they haven't scored more than 80. So it's going to be a massive challenge for North Melbourne to also keep their senior players interested in football at the moment. You hear about Zerha thinking of leaving, Davies Uniac thinking about leaving. They've got the young crop coming through, but the older brigade, they're the ones that need to bring the milkshakes to the yard. And I just think Adelaide are going to do it, and they're going to do it quite convincingly down there at uh, Blundstone Arena. So North Melbourne, you're going to be losing again and making that 0-7 and seven for the season so far. All right, in my eyes, this could be, besides the Anzac Day clash, the Cracker Dacker for the weekend. It's Saturday, 4.35 p.m. Perfect time for a perfect game. Geelong versus Carlton. Two teams that have only lost one game combined over their last 10 encounters. Uh, Geelong, sensational last week. Carlton are just getting better. And they've got so many players out that uh, when they do eventually come back, it's going to make it hard for spots. But if there is one thing that I think that where Geelong will get them is their back line. I think that trying to contain Cameron, can trying to contain Hawkins, 
Stengel, you've got Holmes running down there as well there. You've got Myers, you've got Close. It's a very, very difficult challenge for any back line to succumb. And now without having Adam Saar down there is going to make it really hard. But don't make it wrong. Carlton, there will not be any Tom Stewart to concussion last week. So that means that Kerno, Mackay, they're going to have their hands pretty empty. Also, remember, De Koning was pretty good last week down there as well, too. So if I'm looking at this one, I'm saying Carlton are going to lose this. But this is going to be, I reckon, no more than a two-goal game. And it's only going to come down to the strength of numbers. And it's just going to be Geelong dominating the season once again, just by playing awesome football, uh, as they have been doing over the last as they have been doing over the last six weeks. All right, Fremantle versus Western Bulldogs, 7.40 p.m. at Optus Stadium. Fremantle should win this, but they won't. Western Bulldogs will win this one and win it quite comfortably. Fremantle got beaten by West Coast last week. And that's not to say that uh, West Coast were bad. It was just Fremantle were absolutely putrid and West Coast played great footy. Uh, and with that saying, I think Fremantle, from what we saw at the start of the season, are a completely different kettle of fish now. And they are nothing where they were um, towards the start. And the Western Bulldogs, when you've got little, you've got little Cody Waitman running around, dominating, you've got, uh, there'll be no Jamara Eugle Hagen. Norton comes out and kicks six. Uh, you're in a pretty good spot. You've got Darcy floating around there as well too. The midfield is absolutely humming with Bont setting things off. And I think they'll enjoy the wide open spaces of Optus Stadium. And Fremantle are going to lose this one by about, I reckon, four or five goals and really start to put that pressure back on uh, Justin Longmuir, which he sort of escaped a little bit towards the start of the season. All right, let's get into the Sunday games. Gold Coast versus West Coast Eagles. We're keeping this one short. West Coast are going to lose this one. West Coast are going to lose this one. If Gold Coast played the game that they should play, this could be a 10-goaler. Uh, there's no reason why Gold Coast can't absolutely dominate this. Ben King has been really, really lowly over the last couple of weeks. He needs to have a big game. That midfield of Gold Coast is humming along nicely. Dimmer will be saying, this is where we need to stamp this game and stamp our authority on this. Uh, Harley Reid is not going to be playing, and that is going to be a massive hole for West Coast. And I think just the midfield and, and the backline dominance of Gold Coast will take West Coast out. 10-goal loss to West Coast, uh, just to sort of put a bit of a dampener uh, on their season. All right, last game of the year at the MCG. It's Hawthorne versus Sydney. These two teams have played some cracking games over the years, cracking grand finals. This is going to be a bit of an interesting one as well. Uh, Hawthorne have beaten Sydney recently at the MCG. It's Sunday at 4 p.m., so it is a bit of a later game. Um, but I reckon that uh, Sydney will definitely take this one out, meaning Hawthorne are going to lose. I just think Sydney have too much to lose. They need to consolidate against uh, teams like GWS, Carlton, uh, Geelong, a, a top four spot, and this is a game that they need to win, and win quite convincingly to get their percentage up as well. So really looking forward to seeing what uh, Armady and Logan McDonald can do down there forward. Papley loves running around on the G. Isaac Heaney is going to have a cracking season, uh, and that's going to continue this week as well. Hawthorne just need to be able to negate Frost and Sicily. Just don't make any stupid mistakes because it's going to cost big time. Um, but also there is a bit of pressure on Mitchell as well too. And that's why I'm saying the Hawks will be the losers. It could be close, but I don't think it will. This is going to be a five or six goal. It could be even more if Sydney DePaul decide to pull the digit out. And there you are, superstars. There's our losers for round seven. Have a